everyone for joining on a Monday, a hot Monday. It's a little cooler in here, so that's good. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a good kind of, my trajectory has been sort of between different professions and between different disciplines, but kind of through the lens of design throughout each one. So today we're going to talk about blockchain as it relates to more of the design world of things and as it relates potentially to the academic world that you guys are participating in right now. So I'll be talking about blockchain urbanism and uh, I'll go through the slides and at the end we can have an open conversation about it. If you guys have questions, definitely uh, save them for then and then we'll have a, a, a talk about it because this stuff is very living and breathing right now and we'll talk about a lot of that as, uh, as the presentation goes on. Um, but Kaya has basically told my bio, but uh, yes, I went to, uh, my name is Kirk Finkel. I'm the co-founder of Sandbox. Uh, I co-founded Sandbox, which is a, a practice with Michael Lee. Uh, both of us met one another actually at undergrad when we went to Cornell together and then we moved together and became part of this art collective that moved to Berlin. Uh, so Michael is in the, hovering in the back somewhere, he's over there. Uh, <laughs> um, so Michael and I have always kind of bounced in between these different realms in the professional world as it relates to design. Uh, Michael went to graduate school at Harvard for art in the public domain. I went back here to the urban design program. Uh, for urban design and the two of us have always kind of approached these different disciplines through a very interdisciplinary lens and we think there's a tremendous amount of value for that especially in the era we're in where so much is connected in a way that has never been connected before. Um, so this is a, a question that I think this series is attempted to answer in through the different lenses of professionals that come here throughout the summer everyone is gonna tell you a very different definition of what urban design is. And I'm sure you guys have heard just about every definition uh, imaginable. And that's because urban design is this kind of living and breathing term that is really exciting for me because it's a very contemporary profession. It's something that is always being edited, always being reinvented, and is very adaptive depending on the time period that it is being inserted into. And especially now, cities are so important, city making is so important, and understanding those networks and how they relate between kind of a physical spectrum but also a digital spectrum now as well, which is something that we're gonna get into. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I think this program uh, impacted the way that I see design as this kind of healthy, living, breathing thing. Um, and so we're gonna talk about blockchain as well, which I think has a tremendous amount of similarity in how people approach defining it. Um, blockchain at its core is essentially about a decentralized mindset. It's about uh, what it essentially is is an infrastructure. And the way that it holds data is not dependent on a central or core authority, it's dependent on a lot of different participants playing within that spectrum. So it's about how data is distributed, how it's controlled, and how it can be accessed through a very sort of open realm. And to me, when I first saw these diagrams of how blockchain was defined, I thought of urban design almost immediately and the way public spaces are brought out and how cities start to define themselves in different ways. So, you know, blockchain has the same sort of definition uh, family tree of terms. There's all these different things that people label it and it's always changing. It's changed a lot in the last six months alone even. I'm sure you guys have seen it in the news in different ways. It's been called everything from just about cryptocurrency to data to networks to a little bit of Dennis Rodman. Why not? Uh, so it's, it runs the gambit as well and that's one of the things that attracted me to this, this world is that I saw a lot of similarities with urban design and blockchain. And it has this uh, tremendous sort of sea of open source information. It's an ocean of open source, we could call it. It's a mix of this kind of conspiracy theory stuff that's being propagated around everywhere. It's about an internet of things that is starting to adapt into a more 21st century world that we're living in. It's about a decentralized sort of mindset about autonomous building that can happen through participation of lots of different people in one place. Um, it's about creativity and creating a more democratized web that's designed and catered to an artist in the 21st century, which we have not seen to this point. 
Uh, it's about gamification as well. Um, it's about all of these things, and I think that's what drove me into this world is that while blockchain is inherently about an infrastructure for data, it also defines the way that we communicate and build communities in an internet age. Uh, so this is what got Michael and I kind of buzzing around about a year ago now, thinking about how could we create something that starts to capture this and starts to visualize it in a different way that we haven't seen before. Uh, so we created a, a company called Sandbox. And Sandbox is a community that does just that. And I'll, I'll let the video sort of speak for itself here. Living in a world where our ideas come first and money comes later, if at all, is frustrating. And whether you're an artist, an architect, or a nonprofit, being at the mercy of third parties to find success can make you feel, well, you know. With Sandbox, we invite you to a community that frees you from the grasp of social platform behemoths that rely on you to help make their profits, thanks to the power of blockchain. Now behind the facade of cryptocurrency, blockchain technology helps us to create a rich ecosystem of creativity, collaboration, and innovation. We help integrate your creative process with emerging tools of the crypto world, helping you to quickly navigate through the hype and hysteria to discover real resources with real results. So join us to start actualizing your ambitions and learn more about a decentralized future powered by your creativity. Sandbox. Creativity empowered. Alrighty. That's our... Let's see if we can escape properly. We escaped. So, uh, so that's essentially what we do. We, are, we have an incubator program and we help creatives, primarily creatives, learn about the cryptocurrency world in an approachable manner. So we educate them about the resources that are available today. We help coach them through a very daunting environment that is blockchain and literally help them to fundraise for projects. Uh, and we do all of this through uh, different types of cryptocurrencies. And there's one primarily that is very different than Bitcoin. Most people think of only Bitcoin when they think of blockchain or crypto. But there are different types of blockchains that are all catered towards totally different uses. Uh, and one of the ones that we use to power our incubator is called Steam. Uh, and Steam is looking very much beyond Bitcoin. It, it's a very different type of community surrounding it. And it has a lot of different uses that make it really approachable for creatives and design practitioners. So Steam inherently is a social cryptocurrency. It's earned through content creation on the web. And it's earned through different types of interaction and engagement. And to Michael and I, this was something that was incredibly exciting for uh, artists ourselves, designers ourselves, architects. We thought that you know, architecture and urban design, this is something that really is inherently about engagement and interaction. And if there's a way to tokenize or, or monetize that process, that could be a really empowering resource. Um, and that's essentially what STEAM is about. It takes those things that we know, likes, hearts, upvotes, and uses those as a metric for a digital currency. So instead of getting 100 likes or 100 hearts on Instagram, you're actually earning equity in the same platform that you contribute to, which as we've seen with Facebook and other things, this is a really tricky territory right now where Facebook is using your information to monetize elsewhere, but this is trying and attempting to draw that value back to the very people that help contribute to make that platform happen. Uh, and that gets back to the whole sort of model of centralized versus decentralized. You have a company that's centralized, that's earning profits versus perhaps a more, maybe a social network shouldn't be owned by a central company. And I think that's a very spatial problem and that's a, a interesting community problem too of building community in the web environment that we live in. Uh, so Steam is really exciting because it has all of these different applications that are built on top of it, not just for something like a, an Instagram equivalent or a Facebook equivalent, but it's for video, it's for code contributions on GitHub, it's for live streaming, it's for even food reviews. It's, uh, there's a whole ecosystem that's kind of bubbling up right now and it's all using this Steam cryptocurrency. So that for us was really exciting because as a designer, you can start to use and invent all of these different tools to showcase your work, showcase the process of your work, 
and cultivate an audience surrounding that. Um, and so how does that look? How does that appear? It actually looks very similar to the tools that we already use and have today. Uh, this is a couple different blog posts by Carrot Cake, Euron Park, who did the cover for this uh, exhibition. And she blogs, she's uh, a Korean artist, and she writes in a mix of English and Korean about the process of her art. Um, and she does it in a really beautiful and eloquent way. She so shows the whole process of designing uh, her illustrations and gets feedback from the public. People respond, give her ideas. She responds to them and makes her art different. Um, and so when we saw that sort of blog post mentality, we thought, okay, as designers, how does that look architecturally? How does that look in terms of urban design? And we thought, well, if each blog post or piece of content could become a building block, well, that's an architectural kit of parts that you could start to make things with. You could start to think of it as almost a modular architecture. So we thought, let's try this out. Let's see what we could do with something where you build an audience around a project, but you also are simultaneously building value for that, that project. Uh, so we, we tested this out one year ago, almost exactly, a project called Steam Park. And this was our proof of process project where we were thinking, let's take blog posts and make them urban furniture. And let's see what we can do in terms of blogging about this, recording this through all of these different crypto apps and see if we could leverage that as a crowdfunding mechanism to raise equity to actually fund 100% of public work. Um, and that's what we did. We spent about two, three months uh, researching mining Brooklyn, we call it, uh, where we met with a conservancy, Herbert Von King Park Conservancy in Bedford-Stuyvesant. And we met with our conservancy and we said, well, we have, we have an idea. We want to see if we can crowdfund through these new platforms and simultaneously tell the story of your community. We want to interview your stakeholders. We want to blog about the landmarks that are local to your community and try to bolster a new audience for the cultural assets that you already have. And they were like, we have no idea what you're talking about, but sure, give it a shot. Uh, it, sounds, it sounds interesting. We get content out of it and we get a new audience and we get a free sort of public art installation. Let's give it a shot. So we interviewed all these stakeholders. We went to community meetings. We blogged about the design process. Uh, actually, just a quick thing. The, there's a magnolia tree that's, I think, yeah, 133 years old, right next to Herbert Von King Park. And it's the oldest, uh, it's the only living landmark in New York City, which is really cool if you have the chance to see it. It's a magnolia tree, which is super weird to have in New York for anyone who knows magnolia trees. Um, but so we created a series of these blog posts and essentially translated the popular posts into signage that became part of the park furniture that we installed within the park itself. So this became a really sort of comprehensive process where it was very, it was very kind of easy to draw in the narratives from one to, from the digital world into the physical world. And that became part of the kind of placemaking efforts that was the Steam Park project. Um, and it was a big success. It worked really well and the park was thrilled with it because all of a sudden they had all this furniture, they had these planters and these benches that they really didn't have the funding to do previously. They didn't have the typical funding that a Central Park might have or a Madison Square Park might have. They were really struggling to figure out funding re avenues, new avenues for funding. And this was something that kind of landed on their doorstep. And they have a really rich cultural history surrounding them, but there weren't any mechanisms set in place to basically mine that for value and visualize it in a physical way. So this is us kind of from blogging to installing furniture and a, a shot at the neighborhood. Um, and so this was our summer pop-up garden uh, and it, it was really fun to kind of install it there and it became this sort of modular thing that we added furniture onto as the budget allowed it, depending on how the post did. If the post did, if it went viral, so to speak, then we had more funding to build more planters and more benches and add different signage. Uh, but we really treated it as a pure sort of test project to see how that, would, how that would play out. And what was most exciting about this project was people came from the internet world that we had developed on Steam and they visited the park in person where they had never visited this park before. And so you got a really different sort of community that was arriving at this place, a mix of the stakeholders who we interviewed as part of this process and the people who we started to gather through our online presence as well. 
So it was this merging of a bit of a physical uh, and digital sort of realm. And it was really exciting because both, you know, these folks who had lived maybe in different parts of Brooklyn had never been to this park before. But then all of a sudden they see their name on a sign because they, they voted on this project to, to earn currency or they donated cryptocurrency as part of it. And they had a different kind of stakeholdership or stewardship for that place. Uh, and so this is the final piece. We had a series of kind of shaded uh, planters and benches and we worked closely with the Conservancy to figure out different planting options for that and different programming that could surround it for last summer. Um, and so that was a really exciting accelerator point for us because we thought, okay, this is something that if we could build this park in New York City, then there's a lot that people could do around the world with this sort of technology and this embracing of creativity, technology, and culture, which our whole point in this was trying to find ways that culture can have value. You can extract that value and make something physical with it. Uh, so Sandbox, we've been going around and doing a series of different presentations. We did a bunch of public workshops. Uh, we were at the Summer Streets thing and we were doing some fun workshops with kids about ideation and thinking about how cryptocurrency can affect uh, public spaces, but we didn't use the words cryptocurrency, we just had some fun drawing. Uh, but we, did a, we do a lot of these meetings with different uh, artist groups. There's an artist co-op in New York. We've uh, gone around to different places to try to brainstorm ways that people could use this in a similar way, but elsewhere, not just in, in Brooklyn. Um, and we do this through, uh, Sandbox has become this big community of people who I have never actually met personally. It's, these are all folks from representing eight different countries, and they're a mix of artists, of architects, of poets, of developers, software engineers, um, DJs. We have this huge kind of bubbling community that's happening, especially in the kind of Steam ecosystem of things, that really enlivens a project in a different way and makes it very interdisciplinary. And that's been super exciting for us because, and this guy didn't want his picture because he's very secretive, uh, but he's, this, is, uh, this is something that's really exciting to us because you can actually decentralize expertise, get folks from around the world as part of your team, and this is essentially what blockchain is offering. It's really tapping into a global network that you really didn't otherwise have access to. Um, and so uh, there, we're just going to go through a couple quick projects that have come out of the Sandbox Incubator. Our program, we basically have two cohorts a year, and our last one just finished June 1st. And out of that, we have a mix of those artists, designers, architects, poets. And uh, some of the projects that have come out of that, Block Mountain is one, which is a collaborative music album that a DJ in Malaysia collaborated with a, a videographer in Los Angeles, and they created this album where they crowdsource music from people, they play a piece, send it around the world for another person to play a piece, and all of a sudden that becomes an album. There's Whisper, which works in a, a similar way where an artist will draw something, send it to another artist to be drawn. And all of this is incentivized through the kind of likes, hearts, and upvotes that normally you would get on something like Facebook, but when that translates into value, you can incentivize that in a very different way. And that's what Sandbox is trying to do, is incentivize people to do that through our votes as well. Um, the KR Marketing is an awesome kind of collaborative of a blockchain journal, you know, Korean marketers and uh, infographic artists. And these artists create really beautiful, interesting illustrations about the blockchain world and humanizes it in a really powerful way. Um, and more related to the urban design realm of things, we have a lot of community projects that have come out of the incubator as well. Uh, last, last, uh, the past few months we've had Urban Think Tank joined us, which was super exciting. Uh, they're the Uteha in, in Zurich and they've been crowdfunding for housing in South Africa. Uh, there's Mayak and Stempsibu and Stash. Stash is really cool. They have a community hub that opened in Port Harcourt, Nigeria, and they actually use Steam to help provide internet access for the local community. That's entirely incentivized by taking pictures and learning about how to record what's going on in the hub and then using the funds from that to actually power their wireless bill, which is pretty cool. Uh, one of the things that was really exciting for us, we teamed up with Temple University in Philadelphia, and they have a history course for graduate students and we helped each of them create a Steam account, essentially, and then help them 
mine the content that they were creating through the course. So through the duration of that semester, they were able to earn about 3,800 steam, which I think was uh, about $10,000 by the time they finished it. And they then created a grant and gave that to a local nonprofit institution. The whole premise of the course was thinking about ways that nonprofits can adapt into the 21st century in a more equitable way, in a more empowering and engaged way. So they were looking at the blockchain world as a way to kind of explore these new resources. And so now we're super excited. Wagner Free Institute in Philadelphia, which is one of the oldest institutes in the country, is joining us for our second cohort uh, next month. So they'll be using that grant money to basically further their research and figure out ways of developing kind of a historical footprint in Philadelphia where they didn't have funding previously. Uh, another aspect that came, another project that came out of the Sandbox Incubator was Creative Crypto Magazine. And this is really focused on exploring a lot of the different crypto sort of blockchain resources that are available today. Uh, we have a really fun community surrounding that because there are more and more blockchain projects that are coming out around the world that have to do with design and art. Uh, art specifically is a really kind of under-examined aspect of of the blockchain space right now and underreported, but this is a forum for people to connect who are creating resources and learning about new things. Um, and so one of the things that I wanna emphasize today is that there's a really interesting future here with decentralized creativity. Uh, and as it relates to the urban design realm of things, the Steam Park project was just one example of how you can upvote content, like content, and build furniture out of that. As this ecosystem matures, there's no, there's no means to say that you couldn't upvote a building or create modular architecture or come to some sort of decision-making infrastructure that has to do with how communities engage the way that their community grows. There are a lot of tools that are becoming available now that are way beyond Steam that start to take this and bring it to the forefront um, and some of these projects are very close to home. Foam is actually a project that was developed by a Columbia grad. Uh, this has to do with decentralized GPS, which is a lot about kind of updating a universal forum for registries, land registries, which is a really important thing and very difficult to kind of track down as you guys I'm sure have been tracing Google Earth every so often and that gets really laborious and exhausting. But uh, there's Decentraland, which is a really amazing project where they're creating a virtual world where you can design a 3D environment and then actually put it up for sale in a marketplace. These little pixels have already gone for like a few hundred thousand dollars, which is ridiculous, but I haven't been able to get one of those yet. But uh, it's, it's a really incredible way to gamify the web and actually open it up so that people can design anything from a house on that little pixel to a video game that you can kind of walk into as a second life sort of, sort of thing. There's Dada, which is actually locally based in New York City, and they have a really beautiful platform where artists can collaborate with one another, contribute art, and receive Ethereum. Um, and there's tons of different things emerging. There's all of these uh, artwork certification platforms like Codex and Creative Chain, uh, and they're starting to create new ways for artists to keep track of their art in the digital era, which is a huge issue. Same thing for urban design. When you publish something on Instagram, you're not sure where it ends up going, and it's hard to keep track of that, but a blockchain is really that tracking system that allows you to keep track of it and pays you dividends if people tend to use it. So that's one of those things that it starts to become a good infrastructure to spread information around. Lastly, Axie is just a really fun uh, platform. You collect these little guys, and then you can battle them to earn cryptocurrency. So they're really cute, but they're also vicious. So. They're, they're fun. But there's all these different ways that are starting to tap into that. And uh, urbanism itself, which to me is a sum of all of these different terms, it's really on the cusp of the digital frontier and it's really starting to create, uh, the blockchain world is really starting to foster a lot of this connectability that we really haven't had before. So this is a new sort of internet collaboration that's happening and I think it has a tremendous impact on the way that we can design cities, but also engage the communities where we need change to happen. Uh, Steam Park being just one example, but you can imagine how that can scale over time, how that can start to reinvent the way that people interact with public spaces, 
the way that people engage different infrastructure and different social programming. Um, this is something that as young urban designers, this is a really, this is going to become a much more influential realm and internet of things as you guys mature into the professional world. Uh, and over the next 10 years, I think this is going to become a really instrumental part in the way that people practice and especially as it relates to urban design. Um, so just uh, last things here. Uh, we are Sandbox and you guys should also check out our magazine. Um, but we also have a exhibition that showcases a lot of this work that I talked about today and it's opening on Friday at 100 Bogart Gallery, which is in Bushwick. If you guys are around, you should definitely stop by. But with that show, we're really trying to humanize a lot of this cryptocurrency mumbo jumbo stuff and make it about the content that people are creating and the awesome projects that are coming out of it. Thank you. All right.